Good morning. We are live at Belfler Physiotherapy this morning. Uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about modalities, uh, seeing what different modalities are used for, um, and seeing if modalities are 100% necessary in uh, our everyday treatments. So modalities is what we refer to as uh, machines, right? So they use some sort of energy to help in the healing process. So we'll go over some of the ones that we have here in the clinic, and I think we're gonna start with the uh, ultrasound. Um, and so we're gonna have Danielle speak a little bit about the ultrasound. Right, the ultrasound for it. And what it does. Perfect. So this is the ultrasound. So the ultrasound machine, uh, it's used for uh, mainly conditions with um, pain and inflammation. So maybe like a, a shoulder tendonitis or um, knee tendonitis. Um, what it does is there's a little handle and there's two heads on e either side. And basically we use a bit of uh, conducting gel. And what happens is when we turn it on, uh, there will be um, sound waves that get transmitted through the, the head and in through the gel. And it, what it does, it helps to heat the tissues and increase circulation. Um, and um, it's, it's good with in combination with other treatments. It's not necessarily good by itself, um, but uh, um, it's, it's in good use for more of acute conditions than, than anything that's chronic. So essentially ends up being deep heat um, to tissue. Yeah. Now, uh, one question that we often get from clients is, hey, does it give us some sort of picture of uh, the specific tissue that we're working on? That's a, I don't know if you guys occasionally get that question. Yeah, there's no screen on here or anything. Uh, so it won't necessarily, it's not like a ultrasound for, uh, for organs or when you're pregnant. So not diagnostic, yeah, it's strictly therapeutic ultrasound. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Moving on. Moving on. Perfect. Um, the next one, the laser. The laser. <laughs> okay, so this is the laser machine. Um, so laser actually stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So it's a type of low level uh, laser light that is used for this type of laser, it won't break the skin. So we're not gonna have smell burning skin or anything like that. Uh, it's used to, it is uh, transmitted through the skin. The light is transmitted through the skin and it helps with uh, inflammation. Uh, that's the big one that I use it for. Uh, inflammation, uh, chronic, uh, um, chronic, uh, uh, irritation of, of tissue as well. Uh, if I do use it, I'll use it on an area where there's a lot of, um, it, it's, it's more prominent with bones, such as sometimes a shoulder, um, because sometimes an ultrasound can, uh, can irritate uh, the bone if it's, if it's on there too long. So really that's, that's, uh, that's when I, so I'll use the laser. The, the other thing with laser is it also helps to increase cellular activity, which is essential to uh, tissue healing as yeah. well. Yeah. So the, the laser, you don't want to necessarily be close to the face without using uh, goggles. We call these the sexy specs. <laughs> Got to make sure our clients don't leave with these as well. So that's the laser in a nutshell. Um, up next, we've got the interferential current. Aretha, tell us about the IFC. Well, mainly use the pain as well. Yep. And... Uh, like other modalities, you wouldn't use it on its own. You'd use it in combination with uh, hands-on therapy or other things, exercises. Personally, I hardly ever use IFC unless somebody is really acute and they're so painful. And, you know, it's just a temporary relief. From my experience, I found it just a temporary relief. I agree. Anyone want to add I, I've always called it a TENS machine on steroids. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a, it ends up being an engineered current so that the body doesn't get as accustomed to it as a TENS machine, um, which we'll talk about next. Um, but you essentially put some leads um, connected to some pads and you put it over the area in question and it provides a, a, a comfortable electrical sort of stimulation. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of different versions of the IFC. Uh, one common version is uh, with the suction pads, with the uh, the wet 
um, sponges that you put in the suction pads and it leaves hickeys on a joint or around the area you have probably noticed that um, but yeah the version that we have we've got the leads here bigger than the tens leads and then we'll put these pads with again that conductive gel um, sometimes what we'll do is in certain settings is we'll cross the um, the electrodes so for instance, if I'm doing here, I'll get you to help me out with the shoulder. If I'm doing a shoulder, I'll have one on one side, one on the other, and then with the other side, without blocking the camera, is I'll put it up here and there. So all the energy is concentrated on that one area. Okay? So that's the IFC. Perfect. And that brings us into Ten. the TENS. Okay. So similar mechanism here, TENS stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. And so you can see it's a much smaller unit here. Um, often people who suffer from more chronic or persistent pain will have a TENS unit at home so that they can set it up whenever they need it. Uh, again, the purpose of this is to control pain. So it's kind of a temporary masking of pain. So what happens with pain is that your nerves are sending a signal up to the brain and the brain is interpreting that signal as a threat and producing pain. What this does, it gives an electrical stimulation to the nerves to send a different stimulation up to the brain, hopefully to decrease that threat value and take away your pain. But I wanna emphasize this is a temporary solution. It's not gonna be a long-term fix for your pain. That's where you need to come and learn about pain physiology, do some hands-on work, get some exercises, and have an action plan that involves treating the whole person and the whole issue. Good, <laughs> perfect. And then, uh... We'll get Eric to talk about the muscle stim or the EMS. EMS, okay. So uh, our TENS machine here also has an option of uh, muscle stim. Basically, it is also a current except different parameters and a bit more targeted towards motor points of muscles. And its function is that it makes the muscle contract. So typically, I'll use this with people who have atrophy or muscle weakness who aren't quite sure how to activate a specific muscle. What we'll do is we'll put the electrodes on that muscle, activate it for them so people will physically feel their muscle contract, and that, th that way they'll know what muscle to use. So for example, a lot of people when they squat, they'll use the muscles on the front and on the side a, a lot of the time, but they often forget the muscle at the f in the middle here. And that if that muscle is weak, it's gonna lead to some possibly knee pain. So what we'll do is we'll put the electrodes on that muscle, help it activate. When people do the squats, they'll feel what a, a squat with using all your muscle feels like, and then they can start using that at home. So this won't strengthen your muscle, but it's used for feedback to let you know how to activate a muscle, and then to use it, start activating that muscle without it at home through exercise. So this is probably one of the uh, modalities that I'll use the most, the muscle yeah, stick. Same, same here. Um, I'll use it, like Eric said, a lot on the knees. Another, another um, purpose that I've used this for is somebody that's had a uh, stroke. So normally what happens with the stroke is we get weakness on one side, while the rotator cuff muscles here help to support that shoulder. If we had a stroke, those muscles aren't activating as much, that shoulder is drooping and it's causing a lot of pain uh, and mobility issues in the shoulder. So uh, there's a lot of research that's been proven uh, to, that the TENS, or not the TENS, the muscle stem will, is great in the rehab process for rotator cuff after a stroke. So, you know, I think all these machines have a specific purpose in specific conditions but I don't know if they should be used on everybody or everybody gets when they come in, ultrasound, IFC, some TENS, some muscle stim. Uh, you know, they all have a purpose, but in very, very, I think, specific scenarios. And oftentimes I think that people get so used to hearing that they get all these machines that they think that that is part of physiotherapy. And I, I don't know about That's, you guys, yeah. but I, I, I think that not necessarily um, the idea. Yeah. I. I Exactly what Jason said, some, some people come in to, for physiotherapy treatment and they think it's just machines. Oh, do you, do you have this machine? Do you have that machine? But a big component of the physiotherapy is the hands-on component, the manual therapy. Manual therapy not meaning that, yeah, we don't necessarily have the machines and, and instead, of, instead of feeling tingling or anything like that, this is the 
Do you, do you have this on video? Yeah, this, you can see this? This isn't, this isn't you know, our manual therapy that we do. So the manual therapy that we do is, um, is getting those joints moving, using our hands to getting that perfect glide of a specific joint. Because if you think, if, like, let's say an ultrasound, for example, the purpose of the ultrasound is to increase heat locally, relax the tissue um, so that you can actually move. Well, we can get that same effect through like more of a passive or a joint mobilization. We're moving the joint, it starts to relax, it feels better, and we're actually doing something to get better. You know, put an ultrasound on, I'm not moving, I'm just sitting there getting cold gel applied to my shoulder. Versus if we're actually moving something, it's moving, which is the goal. <laughs> um, so I think that, uh, that's sort of the big point um, to make that these machines, though they can be useful, they're not all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Anything else? To, uh, I think what I would add, just as someone who very rarely uses any of these modalities, is that, like you guys have said, they're very passive, and they're made to be used in conjunction with, with other treatments. Yeah. So if your whole treatment consists of being hooked up to different machines and then maybe having some heat or ice thrown on, that's not going to get you better. Our bodies are made to move. You mm -hmm. need to move your body to cause tissues to adapt and heal. So yes, there's a place for these machines, but a lot of what we do with our hands on and with exercises is more effective and uh, will be will get you better faster. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with Ruth. I've actually had a client re recently that wanted to come see me because we had laser and we had tried it the first session uh, but we also, the, this client needed exercise. And after the first session, we, uh, we stuck to just the exercises and she showed improvement with just that, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. So I think oftentimes too, people rely so much on what's online in terms of Google and, you know, oh, I have a shoulder pain, which is maybe a rotator cuff. Oh look, ultrasound and TENS and, and stuff are, are super useful, but, they don't know any better, so they call in, and, I, and I'll ask the admins here, yeah. they call in and they're looking for, do you have this and do you have that? Mm -hmm. Sure we do, but is it appropriate for your condition? No. Right, is that, mm -hmm. what other questions do you tend to, yeah. uh, to get? Uh, I think we get a lot of questions asking if we, if we use machines, uh, and, and, and we say yes, but we're more of like a manual, hands-on hands -on. Yeah. type clinic, so anything? No, else? No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we like, have do we have a shockwave machine? Do we have shockwave? No, um, no. We we don't have shockwave. Uh, or the cryo chamber. Or, or the cryo I chamber, guess, anything like that. Ask, um, yeah. The thing with shockwave is it's it's been proven to be effective in a, such a small portion of conditions that um, to me, and this is me being sort of the, the, the owner, is it really justifying the cost of the machine? Because oftentimes when you get shockwave, you're paying a surcharge for your treatment, but is the condition that you're dealing with really one that's been proven to be effective with a shockwave treatment? So there's always that to consider as well too. Um, not that I'm discounting shockwave, it's just in the right condition, it may be useful, but it's not every condition that it is useful, so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, if a client comes in and they want the machines, our job is to educate our clients on the benefits of a machine, the benefits of just using machines, or the, the issues with just using machines versus uh, doing manual therapy as well. So yeah. I, think, uh, I think that's one of the great things that we do here is educating our clients on what's appropriate for your specific condition. Yeah, we don't follow we don't follow a specific recipe in terms of everybody gets this 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 this. You get what you need for your spe specific condition. Yeah. Perfect. I think that covers it. Yeah. So Yay. so if you guys have any uh, questions, if you missed the the live uh, the live video, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments, and uh, we'll be sure to answer those questions. Yep. Yep. Good. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, what are, what are we doing here? So I say Bellflower. Okay, but what are we doing for, for the people out there? Oh, this is our team cheer because we're a team, and this helps to kind of boost morale and keep us feeling are you, energetic. Are you coming in? Yeah. yeah one more. Everybody ready? My hands yeah. are cold. <laughs> Bellflower. PG. PG. Woo. Woo. Thanks, everyone. So funny. See you next week. <laughs>